Hi guys, it's so good to be here again on True Talk. I have with me someone so amazing. <laughs> guys, the truth is that I'm starstruck, so I've been unnecessarily quiet <laughs> because I don't want to show myself too much, but this is an amazing actor, is a producer, right? And, you know, he's here to share some interesting insights on relationships. Here with me is Daniel. <laughs> Daniel is good. so good. Please don't smile at me. <laughs> if you smile at me, I'll be, I'll be safe. <laughs> Hi, Jumake. How are you? Hi. It's so good to have you here with me. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey to your career journey and all sorts of stuff. Right. Thank you. Uh, so I have a background in chemical engineering. That was oh, my wow. first degree. I schooled in the north in Mina. Uh, and well, I, at some point I knew that I was going to um, do art and entertainment. Okay. So um, I decided to pursue a career in art and entertainment. It wasn't easy for me to break out of the whole engineering mode. Mm -hmm. Um, but but I did it, you know, um, and and yeah. So after I quit my job in, I think it was in um, twenty twelve um, that I quit my engineering job. I uh, decided that you know to give me soft landing, I'll, I'll get a I'll get a nine to five in arts entertainment. So I started working as a content producer within Danny TV. Okay. And after that, I decided to go to South Africa to study film. So um, that was my first real training. I, I did film school in Joss as well for a year, over a little over a year. But you know, um, I felt it was it wasn't enough. So I went to South Africa to study film writing and directing. Um, and then I uh, I came back, and that's when I started um, my career in Nollywood full time. Um, so what I do is I'm an actor, first and foremost, but I'm also a producer, director. Um, I run a production company called Blue Graffiti Films. Okay. So what we do is we produce TV commercials for several brands, several top, top brands. Um, I've been doing that since I was in South Africa. So when I came back to Nigeria to do Nollywood full time, that was like my you know, my plan B, that if this acting thing doesn't work, <laughs> I'll be a producer, you know, just okay. keep producing content, yeah. Okay. So, I recently watched one of your U movies or YouTube, Selena. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> it was quite interesting, by the way. Thank you. And I noticed that, okay, so this guy, the chemistry was there, you know, you act so well that it feels so real. My first question would be, so how do you handle, you know, being in a happy marriage and so having that chemistry on set that would not, you know, affect your relationship one way or the other? You know, I understand that, you know, <laughs> it's, it's movie, but you acted so well that I'm like, these two have to be together. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you manage, you know, that? It's interesting you'd mention because, um, you know, if you read through the comments in sometimes when I post on social media or even, you know, on the Selena um, YouTube posts, you see that, you know, people say the same thing for many of the other female leads that I play with, you yes. know, like, wow, you know, your chemistry here, your chemistry with this person is so great, you know, you guys should be together. If I take a picture with Nancy Sime, for example, you know, I've had comments saying, oh, you guys should definitely be together, you guys have <laughs> such great chemistry. If I do a film with, um, you know, Biba, they may, oh, you guys have, you know, so it's, and I cannot marry everybody, I mean, <laughs> no, but, but, but it's a testament to just the work that has been put into creating, you know, um, such um, such a film. You know, kudos to the producers, directors, writers. You know, they give us wonderful material to work with. And as actors, you know, our our job is to make it look as real as possible. You know, so um, that is that is what I when I get comments like that, I'm I'm like job done. You know, I, I get a <laughs> sense of fulfillment that I must have done my job. But so. Do you have anything you like to tell people who are yet to marry, people who are still out there looking for love, who don't believe that that world called love still exists? Because some people out there just feel like 
I just, <laughs> this thing is just a joke. But so do you believe that romantic love still exists? Is it still what trying regardless of the hurt? Absolutely. Share your thoughts on it. No, I, I really believe in love. I believe in true love. I believe in romantic love. I believe that all forms of love is an expression of the truest of love, which I've learned to be agape love. You know, it's all expressions of that true, true, purest form of love, you know, which because we're humans and we're flawed and we exist in, in the world as we know it today, we can only but express it in different forms, you know, yeah. depending, on, depending on who we are and our own um, idiosyncrasies and how we were raised, we just express it in different forms. But what I'd say is people mustn't be um, afraid to love, you know, um, because like I explained earlier, with love comes hurt, you know, yeah. with love comes vulnerability. With love comes the chance that you might get heartbroken, you might chop breakfast. <laughs> you know, <my laughs> what, <laughs> what I'll say is, oh, but eat that breakfast with glee. <laughs> because the truth is, in the pain yeah. of a heartbreak or in the pain of a disappointment mm -hmm. is also your learning and your evolution mm. into a more refined you, into a better you, you know. Um, to avoid that pain is to cheat yourself and sure. to short circuit your own development, your own growth. So um, in us, innately, is some forms of misconceptions and stupidity and foolishness and all those things, you know, but pain would sort of like refine it out of us. Mm. So if you always avoid making mistakes or avoid taking steps because of the fear of failing, then you never learn. It's like anything in life, you know, if you fear trying out to be the beautiful presenter that you are, you'd never learn to do it better. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you fear love and you try to avoid it, you'd never learn to truly love someone mm -hmm. through difficult times or through, you know, hard times, yeah. Okay, so I want you to <laughs> share some of the experiences that has made you better. Some of the things that you probably encountered or experiences generally that you feel like, oh, this made me better for my <laughs> wife at the moment or it's making me better as a person in this relationship generally oh wow some of the things I have to, I'll have to take permission to share because <laughs> I have to be able to go back to my house after this but um, I'll just see if I can just skirt through some of those experiences um, okay so first I, I'm a last born child of okay. four children right so I'm last born my wife is an only child. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's a double whammy. And for us coming into the marriage, I thought, you know, I, I didn't know that I was going to... Because, like I said, you never fully know someone, right? So going into the marriage, you know, it was very different vibes to what I got when we started the marriage, you know. Um, and I started seeing things that I thought, you know, as last born, I was used to doing things on my own, but I had to pass well, through. Always having your way. Yes, I was, I was used to always having my way. Exactly. And I was used to always, before I'd make decisions, I'd pass through several gates. Okay. Right, I'll go through the parents, go through my older siblings, go to before I make the decision, right? But I was still used to having my way mm -hmm. in spite of that, right? For my wife, on the other hand, very independent, very, you know, free-minded, very powerful, you know, all of that. And I wasn't used to that at all, you know. And all of that only revealed itself, well, there were signs of it, but it revealed itself after the marriage. And I was just like... <laughs> Tell me from a man's point of view, what do you guys want from us? Like, when you are... A lot of times these days, people are just serving breakfast on the streets. You go turn right, left, <laughs> center, everywhere, breakfast. So what do you men want exactly from us, women? I think I'm speaking for the women. So what do you people want? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it would differ from man to man, but I'd hazard a guess on some generic points. Okay. Um, 
Number one, men want to be left alone. Like, can you just, <laughs> can you just leave us alone? I know it's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> okay. I have a witness work? in the house. It's a, it's a paradox, but it works. I'll tell you. In a relationship, it's yes. one of us. No. So you cannot See, say yes. you want to be left alone. It's I, not possible. Agreed, agreed. But, but the thing is, in terms of in problem solving, mm -hmm. men are very independent problem solvers. Right. To let that the hard way. Yeah. So 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 just let when a man is thinking, just leave him. When he's dealing, just just let him be. When he's ready to partner, when he's ready to come around, he'll come around. Sometimes you need to just be reminding him, I'm here, you know, like mm. you know, like I'm not, you're not alone, I'm here. You know, mm. just that reminder works, mm. but I know women like to just be like on yes, it. Like, yes, because when what? we talk about it, it's, it's shared. Like you find solution in talking about it, in being there, in trying to be there. <laughs> so that's how we work. So you say you be want me to be left alone. <laughs> I cannot understand this. But yeah, well, I mean, yeah. it's weird, so but ladies. that's how we process things. We just like to figure things out on our own mm -hmm. and then come and share. Okay. Right? So I think we to... work faster that way. I don't know, for some weird reason. Maybe it's the way we're wired, you know. So, one. Two, um, men thrive on respect. Okay. So, yeah, so they want to be respected. Treat a man like a king, you know. Treat him... And the king will respond to you, you know, no matter how terrible it appears that he is or he's treating you, just, you know, speak to the king in him, respect him, adore him, give him all those things, you know, that you would, even if he's not behaving like a king, but respond to him like a king and you'd see the king would show mm. up, you know. That's a very, very valid point. Yeah, yeah, that works all the time. That works all the time, you know. Mm. If he's being stupid, just... Treat him different. Don't treat him because the tendency is for, for women to be reactionary. Like you, you behave stupid I'll and then you treat stupid. you stupid. Exactly. <laughs> it's just basic. But it's it's it will work it works to just flip that on his head and even if he's being stupid, treat him like a king, then he'll be like, hmm. Mm. <laughs> okay. And the king is <laughs> Yeah, we we'll start showing up, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so those two things. Um yeah, those are the other ones are quite just, you know, maybe tailored to my needs, okay. you know, but yeah, I'll leave it as those two things for now. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was having amazing me. having you here. We hope to have more of you on, you know, to talk more about different other topics. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. So, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe at Triflutter. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.